There's billions of liters of beer exported every year around the world. And our lovely Dutch company, Heineken, is the third largest exporter in the world. They export around 2 billion liters of beer each year, which is a good 9% of the total world exports. But as you can see, I'm not drinking Heineken, I'm drinking Upler. So how does Heineken get an average Joe like me to drink their beer? Well, that's where advertisement comes in. In 2012, when Skyfall came out, they used it. Heineken paid MGN $45 million to have their beer product showcased in the film. And we were curious, did this actually work? By having James Bond drink the beer, did Heineken get people to buy Heineken? We went to the beta lab to find out. So our hypothesis is that, yes, the implicit advertisement found in Skyfall is more effective than the explicit advertisement found in normal Heineken commercials. Were we right? For the experiment, we chose 10 participants. These participants were put into two equal groups, one destined to see an explicit advertisement and the other one an implicit advertisement. Now, we took the two groups of participants to the Yuva Beta Lab, where we set them in front of eye tracking technology. While their eyes were being tracked, we showed the explicit advertisement group a made-for-TV Heineken commercial. This was from an advertising line where Heineken used the James Bond property to advertise their beer. To the implicit group, we showed implicit advertisement clips that were actual clips from the movie Skyfall, where characters casually, but not obviously, drank Heineken. After we showed both groups their respective video clips, we presented them with a questionnaire prompting them to choose their preference between four beers. Hertog Jan, Rolls, Amstel, and Heineken. In the explicit group, one person picked Heineken, and in the implicit group, two persons picked Heineken. And our results seem to indicate that uh, implicit advertisement did work for Heineken, although seven out of ten participants picked a green bottle, namely Rolls or Heineken, which seems to indicate that the stimuli that we represented to the subjects, namely green bottles, Heineken, could also skew with the results in a way that the participants were more inclined to choose a green bottle, regardless of the specific brand of it. We conclude that uh, implicit advertisement is more effective than explicit advertisement, and if it's the case that people notice the product placement, then in all cases they actually um, prefer the product over the other uh, possible brands. Uh, essentially, if the fixation duration initially was uh, more than 0.28 seconds and the subject had seen Heineken and were part of the implicit target group, they picked Heineken without exception. Uh, alternatively, if they were part of the explicit target group and the fixation duration was more than 1.1 seconds or less than 1.1 seconds, the choices of beers were then respectively Rolls or Heineken. There's also another reason how we could explain the results and alternative hypothesis, and that is basically that personal preference plays a stronger role than we originally expected. So basically that um, even though we show the participants the, uh, the explicit or the implicit ad, that no matter what we actually show them, they already have their preference and therefore it didn't matter what we showed them. So did Heineken waste their money after all? Maybe not. We now know that implicit advertisement has some effect on buyer choice if they notice the beer. And if they did, then the product is in their head and they are more likely to buy it. Perhaps then, implicit advertisement works best on those who do not have strong preferences. Like this participant. Which one should I, should I pick? I don't drink any of this and I don't know the difference in taste. So I should just pick one, so yeah. I pick that one. Yo, what's the research about? Yo, mama.